haven't even had time to get my own place yet. I need a minute. Okay, okay, I get it. But maybe Santa could bring you something else you've been missing. Like? I'm gonna show you, come with me. No, 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 I gotta get these sprinkles to my mom and then get to work. It'll only take a moment, I promise. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Why did you bring us here? Uh, hard to believe that Mendoza's closed this place down, huh? Yeah, in Santa's Village, the Light Festival. The town has lost a lot of Christmas traditions. Mm -hmm. Camila Mendoza is a client of mine, and she needs your help. Does she need a law professor to give a lecture? Camila and her brother signed a contract to sell the land to a company that's not doing what they said they'd do. Sounds like she needs a lawyer. Oh, wait, you're a lawyer. I do family law, not property. Eve, I don't practice anymore. Oh, come on. You love this stuff. You were one of the best property law attorneys around. You did cases for legal aid. You brought in pro bono work to your law firm. You fought for the little guy, David versus Goliath. Well, now I teach future Davids to fight future Goliaths. Okay. I had to give it a shot. Okay, I saw cars parked outside the drive-in on our way over here. Do you know what that's about? Holden! Ooh. There he is, the man of the hour. Uh. Huh? Hope you don't mind. Uh, some of the snow cleared this morning. No, thank you. Good thinking. Last thing I want is for the COO of Excelsior to be trudging around here in knee-deep snow. You know, once Excelsior builds their distribution center, think of all the presents they're going to pass through here. You're making holiday dreams come true, Holden. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just like Santa Claus. So how long do we have with their COO? We have about an hour. Uh, she just wants to take a tour of property before we sign the contracts. Anything you want me to cover? You're the mayor, Bobby. You just talk up the town like you always do. Hey, I'm good at that. You are. Feeling nostalgic? No, not really. I mean, this is my dad's place, not mine. You know, this distribution center is a huge win for Brennington, but people are going to miss the drive-in. Yeah, not enough people, okay? Nobody comes here anymore. I looked at the books. My dad was keeping this place afloat with his savings. You should take a look at the town's anniversary exhibit. There's a great picture of you and your dad down there. Okay, where's that? The library at the college. Today's the last day before winter break, so you should probably hurry if you want to see it. Okay, great. I'll take a look once we're done here. Oh, showtime. Mom, I got your sprinkles. Those are for Luke. Wow, this is what I imagine Santa's kitchen must look like. Oh, thanks. I am catering a Christmas party for 150 people tonight, and the profiteroles won't make themselves. Can you get the lumps out of that? Uh, and what's wrong with your kitchen? It caught fire. It didn't catch fire. The oven overheated just a tiny little bit. A fire extinguisher was used. Ergo, it caught fire. <laughs> Sadie, please. Charlie Decker's gonna let me use the food truck that he doesn't use in the winter, but until then, Mom's kitchen is all I've got, and everything is taking twice as long as it should. Okay, but I have to get to work. I, I you got this. <laughs> hey, don't give up before the miracle. No, no, no. You showing up was the miracle. Two minutes. Thank you. Have you guys heard anything about the drive-in? There were cars parked outside this morning, and the gate was open. Well, maybe Holden's back in town. Do you think he's selling it? Holden, you know, she was in love. Luke. He was the first boy that she ever kissed. How would you know that? You did, didn't you? You read my diary. I knew it. I was your bratty little brother. Of course I did. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I remember you and Holden being an item. And then? And then he went off to college. Well, let me ask him. Thank you. Yes, Luke, I'm, I gotta go. I'm sorry. For <laughs> federal rules. Not a creature was stirring, especially sisters whose little brothers read their diaries. I, I'm never gonna get this all done. I believe in you. Lots of space to expand, Kendra. 14 beautiful, beautiful acres. Uh, easy access to the highway. Long driveway, like you needed, huh? And the center of town is just a mile from here. Relax, Mr. Mayor. I think it's perfect. Oh. You do have other properties, though, right, Holden? We do. Our company has holdings all over the Northeast. Well, we're in a very aggressive growth mode. This uh, works out. I think I could keep you very busy. Sounds good to me. I like busy. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, historic designation isn't going to be a problem. Is oh, it? no, 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 no. no yeah, state and local governments set the rules, but it's, it's different everywhere. Here, uh, being registered historic uh, doesn't mean that it uh, can't be sold or even torn down. It just means that the local historic commission has to approve the plans. 
And the local commission is, is meeting this afternoon. And uh, I'm on the commission. So uh, <laughs> it's just a formality, really. Hmm. Just a formality. I think we have some contracts to sign. I think we do. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> OK, let's say the abominable snowman wanted to sue Santa over who owns the North Pole. Now, Santa could hire an elf to be his lawyer, but the snowman couldn't, because the elf would want Santa to win. It's a conflict of interest. In fact, even if the elf just drew up the contract, it could be voided and thrown out completely. You know, I think the moral of the story is property law saved Christmas. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> Have a good break, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'm, um, uh, oh, what has it been, like 20 years? Uh, sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what are you doing here? I thought you were in Chicago. I was. How did you know that? I, you know, I might have looked you up on social media a couple times, or <laughs> my dad would tell me things. Oh, yeah. of course. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thanks. I was very fond of your dad. Uh, um. I wanted to make it back for the funeral, but I had a court case and I couldn't get out of it. And... It's all right. He would have understood. He was very fond of you, too. Um, but he told me that you were like this big time lawyer and, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you got engaged. Oh, I'm not anymore. Oh. Uh -huh. Either of those things, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, I gave up my law practice about a year ago and um, moved back here to Brennington over the summer. I'm, I'm teaching here now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Good. Good? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Okay. I may have looked you up once or twice also. <laughs> so you are a big time hotshot real estate developer now, huh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not a big shot by any stretch of the imagination, but yes, real estate. So what brings you to town? Oh, I'm just here to settle up some stuff with the estate, and so. I saw this great picture of you and your dad. Oh, yeah. How old were you in that shot? Uh, I don't know. Four? I went to the drive-in as often as I could, but growing up there from such a young age, that must have been magical. When it reopens this spring, I will be first in line. Good. I should get going. Me too. Yeah, but it's good seeing you. Yep, you too. Uh, I mean, I'd say we should catch up, but uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. Next time you're in town. Yeah, next time. Merry Christmas. You too. Hey, Mom. I just talked to Marie Cunningham. Remember Marie? She's the one who puts all the dancing elves out in her lawn at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, hard to forget that. Well, she heard from Adele Myers that the drive-in's being sold and it's going to get torn down. What? Um, wait, wait, wait. Adele Myers from the bakery? Well, she's also the head of the Brennington Historic Commission. Anyway, they're meeting about it this afternoon, and uh, Holden's supposed to be there. Oh, I bet he is. Um, let me call you back. Adele? 
Merry Christmas. Mr. Mayor, Merry Christmas. Should be a rather quick meeting. I think everyone on the committee is on board here. It's a great opportunity for the town. All those jobs it'll create. Lots of new residents, I'd imagine. Absolutely. You know what I bet they'd love? A nice outdoor dining patio at my bakery where they can enjoy some freshly made goodies. Adele, I told you that's up to the planning commission to approve. They don't meet until February. It'll be too late to get the patio done by spring. Now, if the mayor encouraged them to call a special session. You know how Tom runs that commission. It's not going to change it just because I ask him to. Should the Historic Commission approve the demolition of McCarthy Drive-In? Speaking in favor? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Holden McCarthy. My father was Cole McCarthy. Look, I'll be brief. Um, by now, you've all seen the proposal for the Excelsior Distribution Center. Fortunately, this region has suffered an economic downturn lately. But I firmly believe that this can be the thing that turns that all around. This will provide hundreds of jobs. And while I know that losing the drive-in might be sad for some of you, I truly believe that this will be a good thing for Brennington. So, thank you. Thank you, Holden. Uh, are there any speakers against the proposal? Hi, I'm Sadie Walker. I'm an attorney and professor specializing in property law. Uh, in fact, I'm the one who secured the historic designation for the drive-in two years ago at the request of Cole McCarthy. Look, I could stand up here and talk to you about things like equitable conversion and restraint on alienation, but we'd be here all day and nobody wants that. What I'd really like to talk to you about is Christmas. Christmas? Yeah, Christmas. It's all about friends and neighbors coming together in a shared experience, creating memories that last a lifetime. The McCarthy Drive-In is like Christmas. It's a place where the community comes together. It's people laughing together, getting teary-eyed together, or holding hands and falling in love. Our traditions are the people and the places that bind us. Christmas is a beautiful tradition. And so is the drive-in. If that goes away, how could that possibly be a good thing for Brennington? Thank you. Thank you, Miss Walker. That was very inspirational. I, I move we uh, take a recess to confer and uh, grab some dinner. We'll reconvene afterward. Thank you. Can I talk to you for a sec? So... What are you doing? What are you doing? You're trying to tear down the drive-in? I'm not tearing it down. I'm, I'm selling it. To someone who wants to tear it down. Also, the drive-in is important to this town. And by the way, it meant everything to your father. Okay, look, this is a business decision, okay? I don't live here, right? I can't run it. And even if I did, this place hasn't been profitable in years. So, it, Sandy, it doesn't make any sense to keep it open. We were really just gonna bail on it, huh? Break everyone's heart and just run off to the next big thing? Well, history repeats itself. Well, if it does, uh, then I guess you'll just be chasing after the next shiny thing that comes along, won't you? What? Uh, look, this is not gonna happen. Pretty sure it is gonna happen, Sadie. The contracts have already been signed. That's irrelevant. <sighs> I think it's pretty relevant, and the commission's gonna rule in my favor. The commission's gonna rule in my favor. Okay. Did you see their faces when I was talking? No, they care about this, unlike you. 
I, I, I think they're all on my side. Wouldn't be so sure. I'm pretty sure. Don't think so. Get ready to void those contracts. Okay. David, Goliath. I'm sorry to say, we have not reached a decision. So we have a new motion. Miss Walker. Since the commission is split, it's gonna be up to you to make your case. If you believe the drive-in is more important to the town than the distribution center would be, you're gonna have to prove it. Oh, okay, um, how? When you equated the drive-in to Christmas, and that's coming up in three weeks. So, in the spirit of the holiday, you'll have until then to show Brennington why it shouldn't be demolished. Uh, wait, 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 you, you, you want me to do what? Prove that the drive-in is the important gathering place that creates, uh, how did you put it, um, memories that last a lifetime. Yes, yes, uh, but it, um, it's winter, <laughs> so it's really cold outside, and the drive-in is covered in snow. We can't delay this decision until next summer, Miss Walker. We're giving you a chance here. Yeah, yes, yes, and I, 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 I truly appreciate that. Um, you know, what I would like to suggest is um, uh, a committee be formed to study this issue as it pertains to um, a defeasible estate and the doctrine of uh, worthier title. I thought you said this wasn't about property law. It's about Christmas, remember? Yes, I did say that. Besides, we're not gonna fund a study or the operation of the drive-in. That's gonna be up to you and Mr. McCarthy. What? No, I'm trying to sell it. Yes, but if she has to prove that the drive-in has value, then you have to prove it doesn't. You need to put in a good faith effort to make the business work. Otherwise, how do we know that you have the town's best interest in mind? It could impact our vote on whether to allow the Excelsior plan to proceed. Well, all in favor of giving Ms. Walker and Mr. McCarthy three weeks to prove their cases, raise your hand. Okay. Against? There you have it. See you in three weeks. Good luck. Adele, you're just doing this to get back at me, aren't you? Oh, no, Mr. Mayor. I was genuinely moved by what Sadie Walker said. Anything else? Just a bonus. Thanks. Can you see Holden? We're supposed to meet here soon and then go to the drive-in. You're still coming later, right? Yeah, yeah. But... You're really going to try to open tonight? <laughs> well, apparently it's the only way to make sure Holden can't sell to Excelsior. So, the sooner we start, the better. You sure you can't just talk him out of it? Reason with him? Bat your eyes and say, pretty please? I wish. No, I, I don't even know him anymore. But it doesn't matter. It's not up to him. He signed his deal. Now it's up to the historic commission. That's who we're going to impress. Okay. But even if you can somehow prove to them it's worth saving, you can still just sell it, right? Yeah, but not to anybody who could tear it down. His father wanted this drive-in to be here for future generations, and that is what I'm going to do. You, uh, you sure that's the McCarthy you're doing this for? Hi. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Santa passing out candy canes in a parking lot? This is the big Brennington Christmas event? Well, the Mendoza Tree Farm used to do everything, so we didn't have to. By the time we found out they were closing, we didn't have the time or the budget to do anything else. You know what? Just, just go with it. What choice do I have? Hey. Oh, have you talked to Kendra? Yeah. Yeah? She's not happy. I don't know why Sadie got involved with this. Is this about when you two dated in high school? Because it seemed pretty serious at the time. Yeah, well, it was, you know? We'd known each other since we were kids, and then we finally got together our senior year, and it was just it was the best. We went to the Christmas dance, the proms, all that magic of the first time you fall in love. So why did you and Holman break up? I was going into my senior year and he was going off to college. So, you know, I guess that kind of thing happens, right? It was kind of weird. You know, we, we dated most of my junior year and, and, and we had this like amazing summer, you know, he's 
my first real boyfriend. The night before he left for college, we were supposed to meet at the drive-in, actually. Yeah, but um, he didn't show. He stood me up. And when I get there, she is kissing another guy. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Wow. Donald Kopecki. Oh, man, I remember him. Yeah. Uh, what'd you do? Uh, nothing. I chickened out. I couldn't face her, and I... I just felt so betrayed. I, I tried calling, but she never picked up. Yeah, he, he didn't return any of my calls with my texts. He just left for college and left me behind. Clearly, I'm over it, right? Clearly. Right? But what she doesn't understand is that, that none of this is important right now. What is important is that we get this excelsior deal done for the town. Sadie has to make the drive-in work in the dead of winter. You got nothing to worry about. This drive-in thing is going to be a challenge, but I, you know, I, I really think the town will turn out for it. Just do the bare minimum. Hire a snowplow. Uh, uh, show Sadie how to turn on the projector. And, oh, oh, okay. Merry Christmas. But uh, just in case, maybe uh, make that your Christmas Merry wish to Santa. Christmas. Yes, hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, kid. Luke. All in. Sadie. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, so we'll just need to clear some snow. Yeah. Uh, Bobby says he knows a guy. Okay, great. Um, all right, the equipment. Projector, FM transmitter, is it all in good working condition? As far as I know, I'll check it out just to make sure. Okay. Uh, I know people listen to the movie in their car radios, but these are so great. Is there any way to get one of these things up and running again? I doubt it. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, the snack bar. We need popcorn, hot dogs. I want all the usual suspects. I want to try to make this as much like you know, a normal driving experience as possible. Only on ice. Right. Well, that's okay. We'll serve hot beverages like you know, coffee, hot chocolate, apple cider. Uh, we don't have a coffee maker or a hot chocolate fountain thing or and whatever you make a cider in. I uh, know. We can get those things by tonight. It's not a big deal. Okay, it's just. Um, Look, okay, Adele said you have to put in a good faith effort. But this so isn't a good faith effort. What? I, wow. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. I'll meet you in the middle. We'll get a coffee maker, but I'm not getting the hot chocolate or the cider maker. I'll let the cider go, but the hot chocolate is non negotiable. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Hot okay. chocolate. Okay, good. Okay, so marketing. Uh, in terms of getting people here for the opening tonight, I made some calls. My mom's made some calls, but I was thinking to drum up business for the next two weeks, if we could. Run a commercial on local TV? No. No. Uh, how about we pass some flyers around town? That's not going to be enough. Sadie, look, I'm just trying to be realistic about costs. I realize you want to make this place a success, but that also includes turning a profit, okay? That's just basic business. So, let's see you have some grand plan of having a bunch of people work for free. Uh, I do, actually. They'll be here in about 20 minutes. Thank you so much for coming out to help. Uh, this is a really long list. Uh, we only have, like, what, seven hours? I know it's a lot, but I think we can do it. Luke, thank you so much for this hot apple cider. To Christmas at the drive-in! To Christmas, Christmas at the drive-in! Drive <laughs> We're not getting a cider maker. Okay, come on. You wanna open this up? We got some work to do. So, I guess you're extending your stay? Yeah, for about three weeks. Thanks to you. Right. So where are you living now? I'm not. Never mind. You know, I was just, I was just trying to make a conversation. No, I just mean I don't have a full-time residence anywhere. A real estate developer without real estate? How does that work? I just mean that my company has residential and commercial properties all over the Northeast, so I stay in whatever one of those is convenient. Wait, like you don't have a house? An apartment? Or... No. I mean, our offices are in New York, so that's my North Pole, so to speak. So then I guess no Mrs. Claus? No, I've never been all that good at sharing my workshop. Why does that not surprise me? You? Any jolly old fat men in your life? <laughs> uh, no. No. I thought I'd found one, but it turns out he's not the right guy to fill those particular booths. Ah, wonder why. 
So do you like being back in Bennington? I do. Yeah. Different. Different? Good. You know, good different. And why'd you give up practicing the law? I just thought it was time for a change. Hmm. I mean, what you wanted to do when we were kids. You said you wanted to be a defender of justice, right? Yeah, but you know, that's just because I thought I'd look good in a cape. I think the first time I ever saw you, you were wearing a cape. I think you were nine years old. Yeah, the, the school costume parade. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you remember that. Are you kidding me? It's a tough thing to forget. Did I do that? Yeah, and you made that noise. I did not. You did. You totally made a noise. You were like... No, I... That's, and when I asked you about it, you said, because that's what defenders of justice sound like. And I was like, okay. they sound like a static. I was nine. That's okay, what I was said. nine. Right. A very active imagination. Very good memory. Yeah. So do you miss it? Being a lawyer? You know, teaching is actually very fulfilling. I'm preparing the next generation of cape wearers. Oh. Oh. Uh, hot dogs all clean? Yes. Popcorn yep. is clean? Good. Go check the projector. Yeah. This is clean. Great. Good. Summer. Yeah. Just like it. Yeah. You realize it's way too cold for anybody to show up, right? It's not that cold. Oh, sounds like they're anxious to get in. We should open those gates, huh? All right. <sighs> Welcome to the McCarthy Drive-In. Wow. Three cars. Woo! -hoo. Let's hey. do this! Yeah. was opening a drive-in during the winter no i mean i i did some research but not on the right things they would never walk into court unprepared well court is rarely held outside at night when it's 14 degrees okay we were thinking that drive-ins were just a summertime thing right mm -hmm. but i called around and it turns out that there are drive-ins that are open all year round in places where it snows so hard you can't see the street yes yes pennsylvania michigan and i called them and they gave me great ideas on how to adapt to the weather Okay, such as? Well, there are a lot of things, like um, electric heaters, <laughs> blankets to snuggle under. We can upgrade the projectors so that it's brighter and to more easily see the movie in the snow. <laughs> and concessions. I mean, theaters make a huge profit on concessions, so we are going to up our food game. In that tiny little snack bar. Well, Luke said he has a friend who can lend us a food truck he doesn't use in the winter. Huh. You know, that sounds like a lot of work that's not exactly in your wheelhouse. But you know what it is? A property law case for Camila Mendoza. Eve, I just, I just don't have time. I mean, I, there's, there's so much stuff I have to buy. Wait, are you putting your own money into this? Maybe. Even if this crazy plan works, the drive-in isn't yours to keep. I know, I just, I, I, I believe in this. This town needs the drive-in, and I want to save it. I have to try. Besides, I'm going to get hold and pay for at least part of it. Yes. Now, he's, he's all about business, right? So I made a presentation, and the numbers look pretty good. You won't say no to that. No. So it's all right there in the presentation. It's some heaters, some blankets. It's not that much. Are you kidding me? This is like 20 pages long, Sadie. It's five pages. Okay, then it's still four and a half pages too long. I... It's Christmas. Don't be a Scrooge. I'm not being Scrooge. I'm yeah, you kind of are. Hey. Adele, hi. hi. Is this all for the driving? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been busy. Yeah. yeah. yeah How's it going? Uh, great. I mean, we just got a little, you know, minor little things that kind of go over. Working uh, it out. Working it out. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see what you come up with. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> 
kid, look, Sadie, I am not being a Scrooge. What I'm saying is that you have to start treating this like a business because you know it is one. Okay, first of all, Mr. Scrooge, if you read the research, you'll see that it does make sense financially. It actually does. But the truth is, it, it is, it is so much more than that. Oh, okay, I get it. So it's more than a business. It's a movie theater. It's all about the fantasy, you know? It's like not knowing what's going to happen, but imagining the possibilities and then the surprise when you find out. Oh, so it's like a Christmas present. Yes, it is like a Christmas present. What's the best Christmas present you ever got? Snorkel. I was eight, I wanted to be a marine biologist, but then I saw way too many shark movies as a kid. Huh. What? Uh, nothing. What? It's just there was a movie like that playing when you kissed me for the first time. Look, I remember the movie, I bet it... Let's get it straight, you kissed me. Uh, no, 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 you definitely kissed me. What? Wait, I, I, I got scared and you put your arm around me and then you kissed me. Okay, you can remember this however you want. You're wrong. No, I'm not. Well... The, the point is, going to a movie at the drive-in is, is, is like Christmas morning. You never know what might happen next. Oh, it's like a box of chocolates. Okay, uh, it actually frightens me to say this, but I agree with some of what you've written in this business proposal, especially the stuff about the concessions. Yes, yes, it's a huge opportunity. All right, my brother can get a food truck. And I was thinking, in order to attract more attention to the concessions, we could decorate it, you know, with a few strings of lights. Okay. Whoa, 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 how many is a few? We're gonna need a bigger basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what you did. No, okay, look, I don't agree with everything you have in this business proposal, but the stuff I do agree with, I'll pay for those upgrades. Okay, I was going to talk to you about this. So, I'm willing to put my money where my big ideas are. Sadie, so, no. These are investments to my property. I will pay for these upgrades. Investments you wouldn't be making if it weren't for me. So, let's split it 50-50. Sadie, you are on a teacher's salary, okay? There's no reason for you to spend your money on dumb stuff like, like a cider maker. No. First of all, it's a professor's salary, and I have savings, so I can pull my own weight on this. Okay, fine. 80-20. 60-40. 70-30. Thirty, and when the historic commission rules in my favor, I reimburse you for your expenses. Seventy thirty. When the historic commission rules in my favor, every time I go to the drive-in, I get free apple cider. <laughs> okay, I will get the permit for the food truck, and you can hand out flyers to anyone who comes by. And remember, it's Christmas, so be merry, smile. Sing Jingle Bells or something. I'm not gonna sing. You know, you, you're used to love to sing, you used to love Christmas, you dressed up like Santa. Yeah, when I was a kid. <laughs> well, what happened to that hole then anyway, huh? Where did you go? Oh, do you want me to be like you all the time? Just happy, always in the Christmas spirit? Not always. I mean, I, I got away from it for a little while. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here in Bennington now, living at my mom's, and it's just... You you moved home home. Yeah, it's it's just temporary till I find my own place. Yeah? Yeah. How's that? You know, it's actually really, really nice living with my mom. I bet. Thinking about your dad? Yeah. You know, he loved Christmas. He was he would always ask people, like, what are you doing for the holidays? And, hey, what'd you ask Santa for? <laughs> he was just really good at connecting. Really good at connecting with people, no matter who they were. That's one of the things I love about Christmas. It's like this through line that connects us all. Yeah. Come on, you gotta go get the permit thing yes. before the office closes, all right? Okay, I will. And um, remember, be merry. Okay, this is good. This is good. Okay. This is good. All right, come on out. McCarthy driving. You're gonna love it. Come on out. McCarthy driving. Here you go. McCarthy driving. Just got you handing out flyers? Yeah, but, but look, Bobby, hey. 
They said make a good faith effort, remember? Right. And besides, you're the one who said this is going to be a slam dunk. I am doing what I can here. Come on out, McCarthy driving. Are you having sex thoughts about selling? Of course not. Bobby, even if I was, we've signed the contracts. There's no way I can get out of that. We've got to be careful here. All right. If she gets enough from the town excited about this, we're in trouble. Look, it is still a drive-in movie theater in the middle of winter. That's a pretty tough sell. There you go, sir. Here you are selling it. Bobby, relax. The Historic Commission wants me to make a good faith effort. Okay, here I am. Besides, Sadie's got a few wacky ideas that are kind of hard to say no to. There you are, sir. McCarthy Drive-In. We're showing a good movie tonight. The ideas are hard to say no to, or Sadie is? McCarthy Drive-In. You're gonna love it. They're not gonna love it. Okay, we got the heaters, we got the blankets. Yeah, ready and waiting. All right, we got warm and toasty goodies at the snack bar. Yes, we got uh, gourmet hot chocolate, warm cookies and cobblers. Uh, I've been in the food truck over at Charlie's place all day, but uh, it'll be easier tomorrow once the truck's here on the grounds. Okay, good, good. Hey, look, you guys, we took out a big ad, we passed out flyers, we put up posters. Let's see if this does the trick. <laughs> okay. Oh, they open the gates. It's better than last time. It's only six cars. It's double than what it was. That's not nothing. That's not enough. Well, why did you put up even more Christmas decorations? I figured you'd go full out with the uh, holiday cheer. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, well, remember what we were talking about? How Christmas creates this immediate connection with people? Yeah. Ah. Okay, I know that look. Means I gotta go get my checkbook, doesn't it? Christmas is coming to the drive-in. Who? What? Hey! How many trees did you get? All of them. Can you maybe help explain the, uh, the forest theme we've got going on? We're embracing Christmas. See, our problem was that this town doesn't understand the concept of a drive-in during the winter, but now we're giving it an identity. Mm, a national park. No, a place to celebrate Christmas. People used to go to the tree farm before, but now all they have is... The the... Santa passing out candy canes in a parking lot. Exactly. So we can make this the holiday central for the entire town. I mean, with some Christmas lights, Christmas food at the snack bar. I got Christmas movies for tonight. But we could, we could host holiday events here. You really are a dreamer. <laughs> Just like my dad. It's high praise. So, uh, what point do I get to complain about how much this is all going to cost? Oh, well, that is the brilliance of this plan, my friend. You see, if everyone comes here to celebrate Christmas, it'll be very good for business. <laughs> Tell the truth. You were never a lawyer. You were always in marketing, weren't you? <laughs> Actually, they're not so different if you think about it. Except for much bigger stakes in the law. I mean, if you lose a case... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it can have a huge effect on someone's life. Sounds like you know what that's like. Is that why you left Chicago? No, oh, it's just time for a change. <laughs> Sounds like there's a bigger story there, Sadie. To be honest. I mean, come on, you dropped the guy, you dropped the cape. What happened? Have you seen the food truck yet? Ta-da! This looks so good. I love it. Yeah, nice work, Lou. Well, if you like this, wait till you see the Christmas menu. Christmas cookies, popcorn balls, cider, snowman cake pops. Those sound amazing. Good, because I have a catering gig, so you two are going to be making them. What? No, I don't cook. You build things, right? Yeah, build things. <laughs> Same basic concept. You'll be fine. Not really. Uh, no. Yeah, and look, we have so much to do. Aren't you the one who told me that concession sales make up over half the profits? Yes. Well, these cost about five cents to make, and we're going to sell them for two bucks. I like your thinking, sir. 
Where's my apron? You were totally forgiven for that whole diary thing. <laughs> Milady. Thank you. Uh-huh. Hey, that's not so bad. Good job. Oh. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Hey, I'm, um... Sorry about earlier. I, I didn't mean to touch a nerve or anything. It's okay. I, I just... It's just uh... You don't have to tell me. No, it's okay. About a year ago, I, I did a case for legal aid for a woman um, against the city and a big company. David versus Goliath. Something like that. In this case, Goliath won. Is that because of something you did or didn't do? No. I put on the best defense I could. I, I tried everything. But at the end of the day, she uh, had to leave her home. The place where she raised her family, celebrated Christmas. She had to watch the place she loved get torn down. I'm sorry. I mean, I'd lost cases before, but this one just, just hit different. And it also happened around the time my engagement ended, so I just felt like everything was off track. Sounds like you needed a course correction. Yeah. You know, my dad loved this town, and he always loved driving. So this place really was his dream. And I watched him just toil away every single day trying to make it work. And for a while, he was really successful. Then the world changed, but my dad didn't. And I watched him love a dream that never quite loved him back. So when I left home, I thought, well, Dreams sure don't pay for themselves. Never knew that. Well, that was my course correction. And I think ever since then, I've just been so focused on building things out in the world that I kind of forgot about building a life. And now, here I am. My dad's literally left me his dream, and for the life of me, I. I can't figure out the best way to honor him is to preserve it or to help the town he loved to prosper. Maybe you can do both? Can you? I don't know. Did you ever wonder if you overcorrected? <laughs> Maybe we both did. Hey, but look where it landed us. No men cake pops. <laughs> oh, they're frosty. <laughs> hey. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the drive-in. Merry Christmas. Hello, welcome, welcome. Come on in. This is great. Sure no. It's not good enough, but it's not over till the Historic Commission votes in two weeks, so we still got time. <laughs> you never wanted the movie to end. What does that mean? <laughs> We'd sit here underneath the stars, holding hands, watching the big screen, and just as the credits were rolling, you'd get so disappointed. It was like you never wanted the movie to end. I guess that's true. Hey, can I ask you? Why did you let us in? What? Um, no, you, you're the one who, who stood me up. You didn't return my calls. Sadie, because I saw you kissing another guy. Excuse me? 
Um, we were supposed to meet right here. Uh-huh. It was the, the Labor Day weekend. Right. My dad was doing the fireworks, and then I see you over by the snack bar kissing Donald Kopecky. What? Come on. Yes, we were supposed to meet that night, but here at your dad's truck, and I was here, and I waited for you for hours alone. Come on, you're wearing the jacket you always wear. What jacket? The one with the yellow flowers, Sadie. Uh, no, actually, I lent that jacket to Kathy, and she never gave it back to me. What? You, you saw her kissing Donald Kapecki, not me. Yeah, you gotta be kidding me. Why didn't you ever talk to me about it? Look, because because seeing you or who, who I thought was you broke my heart. And I broke my heart, too. That's, uh, that's weird. I mean, obviously, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> it's ancient history. Ancient history? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, we, uh, we have to figure out how to fill up these empty parking spots, don't we? Okay, how do you want to do that? More Christmas. More Christmas. Maybe overdoing it with the Christmas decorations. I can't believe you thought I would kiss another guy. What? Oh. I... Wait, we're not done talking about that? No, no, we are. We are. We're, it's fine. Um, anyway, there's no such thing as too much Christmas. Are you kidding me? They they know you by name in there. They've offered us a line of credit. Zero percent interest. <laughs> and by the way, I did call you after. So you do want to talk about it? No, no, I just need to say that. So? Okay. Now you know. Anyway. Um, we're doing great with the Christmas theme, so if we go bigger, we'll get a bigger crowd. Okay. A month later. Well, we don't have a month. No, I mean, you, you called me a month later. Oh, yeah. And you didn't pick up or return my call. By then? I, I mean, I figured, you know, you were at college and you are calling me to get closure or whatever, and I just, I didn't need to, I did not want to, just, I, I had moved on. It sounds to me like you've given up. Well, maybe we both did. Maybe. Anyway, we're not giving up on the drive-in. So, look, I, I just think, you know, it requires a little more creativity. Um, we need to find some new ways to connect with the community. And I really think that the toy drive today is going to help with that. Uh, I don't, you know, to be honest, I don't really understand how the toy drive is connecting us to the community. I mean, it'd be one thing if they, I don't know, got, like, something related to the drive-in for dropping off a toy, but... Well, give them a free ticket. Kind of going to defeat the goal of trying to sell more tickets, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, all right, fine. Then what's, what's your big idea, Mr. Bottom Line? What if we gave them an ornament with their name, and then they could put it on one of the trees along that main drive? Or what if... We give them an ornament, the drive-in's name. Mm -hmm. And then they can go home and put it on their own tree. And then that reminds them of why they love seeing movies there in the first place. That is brilliant. Yeah? Yes. You know, they make custom ornaments here in under an hour. Although, we might have to open that line of credit after all. Tell you what, I'll take care of this one. For the community. Are you sure? Yeah. You're the one that said we're not giving up. Yeah, wow. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Thank you so much for your donation. Don't forget to come tonight. <laughs> this was a brilliant idea. If I do say so myself. You know, I've heard so many stories from people who loved coming here. Yeah, the love and the free samples. I think people come back for the food alone. <laughs> this is what an engaged community looks like. Right? Mm -hmm. You can't tell me you'd get this with an Excelsior distribution center. I'm sure the community would be engaged with the jobs it'll provide them. You're right. He is a Scrooge. Hey, I paid for the ornaments, okay? Has the ghost of Christmas past visited you yet? You know what? I'm going to go get some uh, Christmas paper out of the car. I don't need this abuse. 
Okay, as fun as this is, I need to get back to work. Oh, no, no, Eve, please, we need you. Sadie, I really can't. Please? Pretty please? Okay. I'll make you a deal. If I stay and help you with your work, you'll come help me with mine. You know, like meeting with a client who has a property case and she's in need of some pro bono advice. I'll talk to her. Just talk, right? I don't practice law anymore. I'm not taking her case on. Okay. 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 <laughs> I used to love Santa's village here. <laughs> yes, we had it dressed up to look like the North Pole. Yeah, that giant candy cane. <laughs> yeah, people would pose with their trees and take pictures. I think I still have one of those pictures in a photo album somewhere. <laughs> so, so this company came along with an offer we couldn't refuse. What did they say they were going to build? Houses on lots that would preserve most of the trees. The rest was going to be a park. They even said they'd name it after my dad. But after she signed the contract, she found out they're going to build twice as many houses as they said, and condos and a golf course. Yeah, they're going to clear cut almost the entire property. All these trees, all this nature, everything my family loved, gone. Did you have a lawyer review the contract before you signed? Yeah, I, I did. A, a guy that was recommended to me. But he said everything was fine and cashed the check. I've known Eve for years, so I called her. I went over everything, but it's not my area of expertise. We need someone who knows property law to find a way out of this. We need you. Sadie, I know you're not practicing anymore, and I totally respect that. But over the last week and a half, all you've been going on about is Christmas magic and memories and traditions Eve. and community. Eve. She had me at North Pole. <laughs> oh, thank you. <gasps> thank you so much. <laughs> oh, the extra lights were a great idea. Mm -hmm. Very unscrewed, like. Yeah. Just let me know how much my 30% of all this is. Consider it a Christmas present. Thanks. Sure. I didn't know we were exchanging gifts. Well, you can get me some socks and call it a day. How about that? <laughs> I'm not getting socks. I happen to really like socks. That's what you get someone you don't care about. Um. Hey, I got this thing tomorrow night at town hall. Oh, the mayor's Christmas party. Yeah. Yeah. You know about it? My brother's catering it. Yeah, hey, this is the hottest ticket in town. Really? Yeah. Huh. I thought it was just some Christmas party. You know, a bunch of people in gaudy sweaters singing carols around a tree. <laughs> no, it's a big deal with all of Brennington's movers and shakers. Movers and shakers? Oh, yeah. Both. Wow. <laughs> Thank goodness I ran into you. I was going to look seriously out of place in my light-up reindeer sweater. <laughs> and yet I would pay to see that. Would you now? I would. Well, anyway, I got another ticket if you want to go. Come on, don't get all weird on me. I'm not asking another date. I'm just saying we can go and, you know, promote the tribe and its business. Yeah. We would promote it? Yeah. Good faith effort. Huh. We're going to have to be sneaky about it, though. You know, probably can't pass out any flyers or anything. Bobby still really wants that distribution center, so. Well, so do you, right? Yeah, of course I do. Thank you. See ya. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for coming. Hey, good night. See you tomorrow night. Bye. Hey, see, ya. see you next time. Hey, yeah, we did it. We did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Kendra. Hi. Everything okay? I'm just calling to see if everything's all right and everything is still on track. Yeah, of course it is. I, why wouldn't it be? Nothing I should worry about. No, no second thoughts. No. None whatsoever. We're all good. Excellent. I'll talk to you soon then. Great. Bye.
make sure there's an equal number of sprinkles on each? I don't think you're paying me enough for equal sprinkles. All the people that I hired to work at the mayor's party are already at the town hall. I am begging you. You want me to count them? I just love the fact that both my kids are going to a fancy Christmas gala. Now, I am working. Sadie's the one who gets to get dressed up and enjoy the biggest party of the year. I'm also working. I'm going with Holden, but we're work. It's not the same as being invited. You're both going. It's a big deal. So, Sadie, do you have a dress? You need to look good for your first date with Holden as an adult. You have to stop. It is not a date. It's business. Sure, I'll remember that one. I see you two twirling on the dance floor. <laughs> there will be no twirling. I thought you said you'd straighten out that whole breakup thing. Well, we did, but <laughs> doesn't mean we're going to pick up where we left off almost 20 years ago. No, that's, that's, that's not going to happen. Besides, as soon as the whole driving issue is settled, I mean, he'll go on to his next big project, and I'll go back to teaching, and who knows when we'll even see each other again. Oh, that's too bad. Second chances don't come along very often. You know what? I have some work to do on Camilla's case before the party, so you guys good? No, 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 sprinkles! Sprinkles! You're good. Yeah, you're good. They're looking. Good. There will be twirling. Oh, absolutely. I'll take pictures for you. <laughs> I want you both to have a great time tonight, all right? And I always appreciate all of your support, always. <laughs> hey, hey, there he is! <laughs> hey! Hey, good to see you. Great. Uh, what do you think? Well, you certainly know how to throw one festive party, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why I keep getting reelected. <laughs> no, that's not the only reason. Oh, thanks. Oh, heads up, I invited Kendra Olston. Oh, she's in town? Yeah, she called me this morning looking for reassurance. About what? We already signed the contract. Well, yes, but it's contingent on the historic commission deciding that the drive-in isn't viable. Mm -hmm. She's worried that you're helping to make the case that it is. I told her everything's fine. You're 100% on board. <laughs> Holden? Please tell me that you're still 100% on board. Yeah. Yes, look, it's more like 98%. Holden! I'm sorry, Bobby. Being back at the drive-in makes it a little tough not to be nostalgic. You could only see this place with your own eyes. It's... Are you sure the nostalgia's for the drive-in and not the person trying to save it? This has nothing to do with Sadie. Okay. Just as long as you realize that this is business. Okay? You can't be all starry-eyed. I'm not letting myself get starry. Yeah. Definitely no starry eyes there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you look, um... Is it okay if I just say, wow? I mean... Um, sure. Thank you. I mean, you, you look pretty wow yourself. Oh, yeah, I just had this laying around, so... Uh, so, so, so what's our strategy? With what? The party. Oh, well, I just figured we'd get some food, some, some drinks, general Christmas merriments, or... Uh... No, I mean, I mean, for the drive-in, like, who we're talking to, who has influence. <laughs> to be honest, I'm, I don't, I'm not really sure. Mm. I figured our best bet is just to you know, start chatting with people and see what we can <laughs> find. Okay. 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 So, uh, where should we start? What about the dance floor? Hmm. Seems to be a lot of people out there. You want to start on the dance floor? Sure. Come on, let's take a twirl and see if we can't find some movers and shakers. <laughs> twirl.
See, those are the things you... Plenty of time to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, plenty of time. <laughs> I come with good tidings. Huh. For a toast to success. Oh, wow. The store commission approved the plans for the distribution center. How could they do that? The meeting's not for another week. Well, Adele realized they were in danger of losing the Excelsior plan, so uh, we moved up the meeting. Bobby, why wasn't I involved? Well, Kendra was talking about pulling out of Brennington altogether. I mean, we couldn't let that happen. It's too important to the town. Bobby, look around. This drive-in is important to the town, too. 
You know, we ran out of room last night. We ran out of food. Okay, there is something special happening here, but we need another week. I understand you got a lot going on around here. You already made a deal with Kendra Olsten, right? We had one little hurdle to clear, and she's thrilled. You told her already? Yeah. Bobby. Hold in. Hold in! Thank you for meeting me. My pleasure. I have to admit, I was getting a little worried. I saw what you and your friend were doing at the drive-in, and I thought you might be having a change of heart. Well, to be honest, I am. Look, Holden, I get it. It's part of your history. It's part of the town's history. It's natural to feel nostalgic at the thought of it going away. Kendra, I, I know I told you that this drive-in wasn't important to the town or to me. These last three weeks have shown me that I was just, I was wrong. Uh, the fact is, I think Brennington just got distracted by the newest and the latest and the greatest, and they, they forgot how important this place was to them. I think I forgot. I understand. You do? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not some heartless corporate type who doesn't have any feelings. I'm a wife and mom and daughter. I understand what it means to hold on to things you love, especially the holidays. Thank you. At the same time, I'm the COO of a multi-billion dollar company who already told her bosses this was a done deal. I don't know how we get out of that. Well, look, there is a breakup clause in the contract, right? Well, yes, but it comes with a very hefty breakup fee. Can you really afford all that just to save a drive-in movie theater? There's got to be something else we can do. Well, if you can come up with something, I'd be happy to hear it. But until then, I'm sorry, Holden. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings <laughs> to you, wherever you are. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New I was afraid you're gonna miss the caroling. <laughs> if we get any more Christmas in this place, I think we're gonna have to change the name to the North Pole Drive It. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a lot of fun. It is. And I need this kind of merriment right now. I have been working on Camilla's case all day and I still haven't found a solution. Maybe there isn't one. I mean, you know, sometimes no matter how hard you work on something, things don't always turn out the way you want them to. I know. Believe me, I know, but property law is tricky. Just when you think there's no hope, you find something small, like a comma in a sentence that you can argue changes the meaning of the whole thing. So even done deals could be undone? Absolutely. It happens all the time. Yeah. You're really enjoying yourself, aren't you? You know, fighting for Camilla. I am. Yeah. Helping her and... All of this it makes me feel like I have purpose again. Sadie, uh, there's something I have to tell you. Me first. I've been thinking a lot about my Christmas wish list. And I'm loving this too much to let it go. I will figure out a way to make it work, help run it somehow. Sadie, the historic commission... But they're gonna rule in our favor. They have to. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Come on, let's sing. Well, 
contract is pretty clear. Regardless of what they told you they would do with the land, they can do whatever they want. And there's no way out of it. I mean, a, a good lawyer will usually include a loophole or an exit clause in case something changes. But not this contract. I'm afraid not. Now, this is totally in the other company's favor. But there, there may be other options for us to explore. Such as? I'm not sure yet, but the important point is, I am not giving up. And neither should you. Thank you. Oh, oh, hey, hold on. Get this. A drive-in diner. A drive-in diner. Huh? If Luke opens a restaurant here during the day, we keep it as a drive-in theater at night. We've solved the what to do if we win problem. Great. Yeah. Great. Hey, another busy night. Yeah, yeah, it feels like the whole town showed up. Last yeah. one? Oh, um, can you take this to the mayor? Oh, Bobby's here? Yeah, yeah, row four. Uh, uh, is everything okay? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, okay. Do you okay, like it? Yeah, he does. So what do you think? Can I have my food before I tell you? No. <laughs> I'm impressed. How about now? Mm. Still impressed. <laughs> and I'm sorry about not letting you know about the meeting. But I still think we did the right thing. Bobby, you've known me since I was a kid. I've always been about business. Uh, I'm not the type of guy who gets wrapped up in things like Christmas magic or miracles or anything like that, but you just look around. You gotta admit, this is magical. Just look at what it's doing for this town. Actually, Holden, you haven't always been about business. You used to believe in things like Christmas when we were kids. Then you got your heart broken. And I'd hate to see that happen again. Hello? Yeah. Thank you for calling me back. Hey, I can see him holding. Uh, yeah, I just saw him heading towards the ticket booth. Huh. What did he think of your grand plan for opening the drive-in? Well, we haven't had a chance to talk about the future yet, so. Yours or the drive-ins? Stop. <laughs> Look, Holden is not, I mean, one way or the other, I'm sure he's still gonna leave when this is all done. Is that for him? Yeah. Shark socks? Yeah. <laughs> it's a long story. Okay. <laughs> Adele. Hi. Sadie. Eve. Hello. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Adele. Merry Christmas. I'm so glad you decided to come down and see what we've done. Well, uh, I must admit, it is very merry. <laughs> and I'm so glad there are no hard feelings. Over what? That we moved up the meeting. That we voted to tear down the drive-in so they could build the distribution center. What? Oh. No, I, I thought Holden would have told you. Hol Holden knows about this? Oh. I'm very sorry. Not even a, a, a comma or nothing. Not. What's he telling me? This contract is just airtight. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Hey. Hey. I just ran into Adele. Oh. How could you do this? I, I didn't do this. Okay. This is this is Bobby and Adele. They they made some sort of deal when I didn't know anything about it until it was already done. And when did you find out? Yesterday. <laughs> and you didn't bother to tell me? I was trying to. I feel like you could have tried harder. Sadie, I'm sorry. How much longer do we have? Tonight. <sighs> wow. It's over. All this was for nothing. Look, Sadie. 
this was always going to be a long shot, right? And we allowed ourselves to get caught up in the magic of the movies and the spirit of Christmas. But look, Excelsior was always going to win. This is a fantasy. I got it, loud and clear. Merry Christmas. Sadie, you've been staring at Camilla's contract non-stop since the drive-in closed. It's three days to Christmas, honey. You need a break. You're probably right. I can't find anything to help anyway. I can't save the tree farm just like I couldn't save the drive-in. So have you talked to Holden? No. I mean, he, he called and texted a couple times, but... I can't talk to him. Sadie, aren't you doing exactly what he did to you when you were kids? Mm, this is different. Is it? Because Adele told Marie that he really didn't know about this historic commission vote. He was trying to find a way to save the drive-in, just like you were. Okay, but, Mom, he made it really clear that it's over. All of it. So I can't, I can't do some kind of big goodbye. I just, I just need to take care of myself and let it go. Are you sure you aren't giving up before the miracle? Mom, how do you know the difference between giving up and letting go? That depends. Is there still a miracle to be had? I don't know. These are for the press conference tomorrow. We'll have big ones to use as a backdrop. Huh. Yeah. I love it. Holden? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, they look great. <sighs> and you want to do this tomorrow? Uh, well, yeah, we want to do it before Christmas. We're giving the entire town a huge present. And you need me there? Yes. Brenton needs to see that you're on board with this. Bobby. Yes. Can I have a quick word with Holden? Uh, sure. So... Where are we at? I don't know. You do realize that if you back out now, you will lose everything. I know. Kendra, I just still think I can find a solution here that's going to make everybody happy. It would take a miracle to make everyone happy. And it's a little late in the day for miracles. Deal. Two days before Christmas. <laughs> I really, really am sorry, City. You don't have to apologize. No, I do. I, I didn't know anything about Bobby and Adele were doing, and but if I knew, I no, no, I know. I believe you. And you were right. I got caught up in some kind of fantasy, hoping for a miracle. No, no, City, don't say that. You didn't get caught up in a fantasy. You brought Christmas magic back to Brennington. You made me believe in this drive-in again.
My dad would have loved it. I think he would. Yeah. But I didn't just do it for him. Holden, this drive-in was our place. It was our movie. It ended once, but I just can't bear to watch it end again. Maybe it doesn't have to. What do you mean? I'm going to call Excelsior and tell them the deal's off. Why? You can't... You, you can't do that. Why not? Because I know property law. It was one thing if the commission said no, but they said yes, which means that if you break the contract, I mean, you could lose so much money, you could oh, lose your baby, business. I don't want our movie to end either. Well, Camille and I saw the lights on, and we called your mom. Oh, I knew you were here, so I, I made a few calls. And then they made some calls. We all wanted to say goodbye to the drive-in. Oh. We know you did your best, just like you're doing your best to save my land. Well, <laughs> guys, it's not over. We're going to keep fighting to keep it open. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to keep fighting for you no matter how long it takes, and it might take a minute. That contract, it's almost like your lawyer was working for the other side. I guess that's not surprising, considering they recommended him. Wait, the company you sold your land to recommended your lawyer? Do, do you know if he ever did any work for them? But he said he worked for them all the time, so he was really familiar with their contracts. He, he said that was a good thing. That is a good thing for us. That's a conflict of interest. I could void the contract. <laughs> uh, uh, how much land does Excelsior need? 14 acres, long driveway, a lot of trees. And there's our miracle. <laughs> uh, do you have the number for that lawyer hand? I think it's time we give him a call and renegotiate your contract. Oh, do you think you can get me out of this? He's not going to want an investigation by the state bar, so yeah, I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> You're brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And so I am pleased to announce that Excelsior will be building their brand new distribution center right here in Brennington. <laughs> this is their COO, Kendra Oldston, and I'm going to tell you more. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're very excited about this center, and even more excited about where it will be built. Holden? Hmm. Yes, uh, thank you, Kendra. Um, very excited to announce that the, uh, the Excelsior Distribution Center was built on a plot of land that is going to be very familiar to you all. But let Sadie explain. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be at the Mendoza Family Tree Farm. <laughs> hey. To some quick thinking and a last-minute miracle, <laughs> Excelsior will now build our center there. And the rest of the land will be preserved for hiking trails and picnic grounds and will be called the Mendoza Family Park. And McCarthy Drive-In will remain open. All year round. Big day, huh? Congratulations on your new deal with Excelsior. Seems like Kendra was really impressed with you. Trying to watch the movie. <laughs> Congratulations to you too. Oh, I'm getting my Christmas wish. Mm. I'm finding your cape again. You did kiss me first. Oh, I know. <laughs> And 
chiều nay mà sao không thấy em gió hiu hiu lòng bỗng nghe lạnh thêm chiều mù sương hay mù khói thuốc anh em không lại anh nhủ lòng sao đây anh cứ hẹn chiều mai rồi lại không thấy em áo ai xanh hờ hững đi vào đêm đợi một giây nghe bằng thế kỷ sâu em mới yêu lần đầu anh đã yêu lần sau chắc tại chiều hôm qua không còn nắng để thêm hồng đôi má thắm dài nhân chắc tại mưa nơi vùng xa tít đó sợ mưa lạc đường làm ướt áo em anh hay tại ngày hôm kia em gần khóc anh vụng về quên lau mắt thu mưa thôi em cứ hẹn nhưng em đừng đến nhé để anh buồn như anh chàng làm thơ anh có hay trời buồn trời chuyên mưa đó không biết yêu em là biết nghe chờ mong chuyện tình yêu muôn đời kiếp đến nay nàng cứ quen hẹn hoài chàng cứ mong chờ ai chiều nay mà sao không thấy em gió hiu hiu lòng bỗng nghe lạnh thêm chiều mù sương hay mù khói thuốc anh em không lại anh nhủ lòng sao đây anh cứ hẹn chiều mai rồi lại không thấy em áo ai xanh hờ hững đi vào đêm đợi một giây nghe bằng thế kỷ sâu em mới yêu lần đầu anh đã yêu lần sau chắc tại chiều hôm qua không còn nắng để thêm hồng đôi má thắm dài nhân chắc tại mưa nơi vùng xa tít đó sợ mưa lạc đường làm ướt áo em anh hay tại ngày hôm kia em gần khóc anh vụng về quên lau mắt thu mưa thôi em cứ hẹn nhưng em đừng đến nhé để anh buồn như anh chàng làm thơ anh có hay trời buồn trời chuyên mưa đó không biết yêu em là biết nghe chờ mong chuyện tình yêu muôn đời kiếp đến nay nàng cứ quen hẹn hoài chàng cứ mong chờ ai chuyện tình yêu muôn đời kiếp đến nay nàng cứ quên hẹn hoài chàng cứ mong chờ ai